I have several around. I'll make sure they join. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Welcome, everyone. This is Jim Sporer with IZIP, the International Society of Service Innovation Professionals. Uh, Vishali Main and I co-host this quarterly meeting. We do this every three months where uh, new members who've signed up uh, with IZIP, we invite them if they want to, to uh, uh, introduce themselves. And um, this is part of our initiative. And Vishali, I don't know if you can go into full screen mode, but um, if you can, we'll uh, we'll get started. Yeah, this is what we call Give, Get, Grow. So um, if you go to the next slide, uh, who is IZIP? Well, IZIP is all of us. We participate in this global community. We have members from, as you can see, over 70 countries around the world, 200 universities, over 600 uh, companies. And uh, we are up to, I think as of today, we have 1,840 participants. And we use that word participants in our community. And uh, we're a global organization. We started in 2012. IBM and Cisco helped start uh, IZIP because we were doing so much in the service research, service innovation. We had a huge global, and still do, global service business. Uh, we wanted to create a community to um, work together around service innovation. And if we go to the next slide, <clears throat> I will model what we do on these calls. And uh, my model is pretty simple. We just talk about um, why we're part of this community and what we have to give and what we have to get and how we want to grow. And um, uh, we have, believe it or not, we have a lot of early career participants. Sometimes on these calls, we've got students and you know, sometimes uh, retired people like me and a lot of mid-career people as well. And um, what I personally though, my give at this stage, I helped uh, found uh, IZIP in 2012. So I'm a founding board member. Um, but these days, now that I'm retired, I'm just loving getting back into uh, Python programming. My PhD from Yale is in computer science and artificial intelligence. and hey, we got all this AI stuff to automate parts of the IZIP back end. So um, that's what I'm really excited about. I code pretty much every day. Yes, I use the large language models to help me code. Um, we've got another member joining, so I'm just going to let them in. I guess I should turn off the waiting room at some point. Um, but we'll circle through everybody and let everybody introduce themselves. So that's what I'm giving right now. What I get is because I'm retired, I really just enjoy watching people's careers unfold. In 2012, some of the student members, some of the you know, it's like, I knew them when they were just a student. And now they're the vice president of HR of a company launching rockets into space. I mean, how much more exciting do you need to, uh, to have as a, uh, as a member? So I just get great joy in watching people's careers these days. Um, and um, to grow, and I know this is people, and I'll put the links into the chat in a minute, but I'm, I'm building an AI digital twin of myself with the help of IZIP students. And I, I give the students a paper and they use the HeyGen platform to create an avatar of me giving an AI generated talk based on the the paper. I, of course, review it and make sure it's okay. But then it can be in French, it can be in Chinese, it can be in German. And um, my wife saw my AI digital twin and she said, um, wow, it sounds a little bit smarter than you. <laughs> so I, I think that's pretty high praise. She did say it was also a little emotionally muted, but that's how I'm growing these days. And I think you know, more and more, we're going to see our IZIP community embrace AI in a positive way. But um, service innovation, of course, we have to mitigate the harms as well, because there's always ethical considerations. So I've gone over my give, get, grow uh, limit, and I'll go out and get those links and put them in the chat. But over to you, Vishali, to model what we do on these calls. Thank you so much, Jim. Uh, it was a great introduction. 
And yeah, it's nice to see everything that you have covered so far. I'm sorry, I don't know what's happening here. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Vishali Main. Um, I was uh, I was introduced to Jim. I think we bumped into each other over some innovation, service innovation, some kind of stuff that I did when I was at IBM. This is way back in 2008. And that's when I realized recently that there's an entire community for iZip. International Society of Service Innovation and Professionals, the way we call it, ISIP. Uh, this is really a great place. And the whole idea of this community uh, building is we believe in the essential or the most finest way of learning is by giving or by sharing. And that's what that's where we wanted to get started. Um, Give, Get, Grow is a smaller group where we you know, meet quarterly, you can get introduced to these groups, meet the people here know a little bit more about what we do here and then work together. So uh, one of the important qualities which I feel is uh, listening, no matter if you're an individual or a leader or anyone, it's very important to listen. Maybe half your problems are sol solved if you do good listening because you know what exactly the person is saying. So I give a pair of, I, I, would, I would be more than happy to lend a pair of you know, yours to listen if you have any questions, if you have any um, anything that you want to know, build with someone, work with other ICIP members and other stuff, more than happy to do that. The GET is learning the art of building a global technical community. We do have people across the globe, you know, when we join these for these quarterly meetings, I'm trying to learn all the things that possibly we could do build as a community together. And GROW is like, we all together build this community to grow. That's my mission here. Uh, feel free to drop your LinkedIn profiles if you, you know, would like to communicate with each other or no, no other people out here. Uh, and I will go ahead and pick a name here if that's okay. If I randomly pick a name and so Diana, did I call your name correct? I hope I did a good, give it a good try. Yes, yes, thanks, Vasily. Yes, I'm Diana Berger. I work at IBM now. I'm flirting with my 25th year anniversary uh, coming up in a few months here. Um, I am the uh, IBM Z processor cache architect. So I work in chip development, hardware chip development. I've been doing that most of my career there and sort of grew up in those in in that world. Um, and I, I just love it. It was I just found the right place to be uh, and I and I stayed there. Uh, so I, I'm really excited to to be here. I could try uh, to, I, I do have some improvisation experience, so it would be remiss of me to not give this a shot here in terms of the give, get, grow. Uh, I'm into it. Uh, so so for the give, um, I, I'll, I'll try to model the caches I build and, and give uh, what I think my role is going to be here uh, as an ambassador is connectivity. Right, so um, I've been involved in SWE for many years, uh, on and off since college, uh, and and uh, three or four years ago joined the ACM. So I'm hoping to sort of build some bridges uh, across those two areas um, you know, over the next year. Uh, in terms of gut, I mean, I think I'm going to say insight and inspiration, uh, and 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 the inspiration comes already. Just the the energy and enthusiasm on uh, on this call at the end of a work day for some of you, um, you know, it's it's evening by me, um, you know, and, and just insight into more of the different aspects of the industry, but sort of outside of my little world here. Uh, in terms of growing, I mean, just kind of to expand on that, right? Um, the network, just meeting more people in different areas, um, and really the opportunity to learn how to impact tech in a more meaningful way externally, right? I think in 25 years, I managed to navigate through IBM and, and we are our own sort of unique ecosystem, uh, but sort of how to, how to grow tech, influence tech, uh, encourage young people to, to get into STEM, you know, um, outside of the big blue walls. There you go. That's fantastic. And I just have to add a comment because uh... Deanna, doing the cache of Z just blows my mind because it is so, um, you know, I was just over at Kindrel in Brno, Czech Republic, and, you know, every bit of code that has to run trillions of times a day securely on the planet goes through these, you know, Z systems, and it's just like, 
wow, to make it faster and do the cash, you've got like a job that is just amazing to me. So much of the world, the banks, the retail, the airlines. I mean, it's just, wow. So, so wonderful to have you part of the community and as an ISAP ambassador, um, all those things are just wonderful. So thank you for joining us today, Deanna. Absolutely. Getting yeah. <laughs> all right, back to you, Vishali. Thank, thank you, Deanna. It was nice knowing you. I think you have new challenges every single day. Even you solve them and still there are more and more challenges. It's great to see. I think you're completing quarter of a century with IBM. That's great. I was with IBM for a decade morning. and I thought that was long. But yeah, you're more than twice of that. Yep. Uh, we can go ahead and pick up a name to uh, make, make key. Did I, sorry, did I call it right? I'm sorry if I didn't yet. Go ahead and introduce yourself. No, that was great. I'm Mackie. Nice to meet you all. Um, I got um, hooked by Jim's incredible reputation and then wheeled in to iZip um, because his name just kept coming up around IBM. Do you know Jim? Do you know Jim? You should you should go talk to Jim. And so I figured out I had to be here uh, to learn from him. I'm one of those IBMers that they call wild ducks. And we have this principle at IBM that we're supposed to champion wild ducks, but maybe uh, we scare some executives and they don't necessarily want to champion the wild ducks. Uh, so one of the things I want to learn from Jim Jim is how to be a wild duck who doesn't get their head cut off the next time they're serving up duck uh, at an executive dinner. Um, my background is uh, mixed computer engineering. I'm a professional engineer in Canada uh, with a PhD in business. And so I translate fluently between tech speak and MBA speak, which if you know at IBM, we have those as very separate ivory towers. There's the propeller heads and the used car sales folk, and they don't really translate very well. I'm the guy who stands between them and either puts on the cargo pants and writes code or puts on the suit and tie and plays the golf games or sits down with the C-level executives to talk ROI and make sure that that happens. Um, I'm late career, but uh, look like I'm early career in terms of my horrible lack of professional success because I'm bad at IBM politics. So I'm here to learn uh, how to do that better and make friends with the right executives to, uh, to try and get us you know, driving those things better. Right now, I sit in Watson X product management, driving a lot of our data and AI stuff uh, in different interesting places. And the other reason I'm here is I spend a lot of time in academia. Of course, I have four degrees um, and I mentor a lot of university students in both business and engineering. I teach MBA strategy and various other things, primarily at Canadian universities and colleges. But I'd love to be involved in any of the academic partnership connections. Uh, the students put me on their mentor boards when they want the blunt guy who doesn't give them the generic answer. And I advise them to get another mentor who's more rose-colored glasses optimistic to counter the mecky bluntness. And uh, so far, my mentees have loved that. Very nice. Very nice. Wow. Yeah, I can tell you some stories. We'll have to have a one on one for a lot of them, though, Mackie. So uh, we'll get that set up in the next. I call week. them beer meetings, Jim. Thank you very much. <laughs> very good. Very good. Um, wonderful. So, so wonderful of you to join. And uh, thanks for the shout out. I really appreciate it. And yeah, let's make sure we're all connected on LinkedIn. I think I think most of our us are connected. But if you're not connected to anybody, just put your uh, LinkedIn there and uh, we'll get connected. So, um, and um, I think we do um, have, a, um, uh, you know, Subu is on and Aditi, I don't know if um, you wanna say anything. We don't force anybody to say anything. People can join and just listen. That's totally cool. Um, we know some people uh, have big things going on in the background and can't turn on the camera. So that's not a problem at all. Um, but oh, there you are. And uh, hi, hi again. Good to see you. Hi. And uh, yeah, I'll go back to Vishali and she can uh, flip the coin and uh, we'll keep going with introductions.
Yeah, thank you, Mickey, for the introduction. There's, there's a nice background. Your background is so stunning. We all would want to have that databases in the background. Yeah, it was really nice knowing. I don't think you're as blunt as you happen to say that, but yeah, let's see. Um, since Jim called out, Aditi, we can, you can Please go tell next. my manager that. <laughs> <laughs> we called Aditi, it straight can... talk in the old days, straight talk, but you have straight to- talk. Radical it's... candor, they call it these days. Oh yes, radical candor, that's right. I think Arvind started that, but yeah, it's it's a delicate diplomacy. I can certainly give a few tips. Um, anyway, sorry, Vishali, I cut you off. No, that's fine. I'm sorry. Yeah, Aditi, go ahead. And we would like to know what brings you to ISIP. You don't have to stick the way Jim said. You don't have to stick to the give, get, grow. But if you think you have something to share, we are more than welcome. Over to you. Definitely. Thank you, Vishali. Thank you, Jim. So I think I'm one of the non-IBMers here. <laughs> I've never worked at IBM. I currently work at SAP. I'm a senior data scientist over here. And the reason I joined is actually Vaishali. So I've been following Vaishali on LinkedIn for a while now. And I saw she's part of this community. And I think she's an amazing person and really inspiring. So I thought I will also join and, you know, just learn from Vaishali, Jim, and everyone here. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. Yeah, thank you and welcome. I'm glad you made you made it for this evening time. I know sometimes it's a busy time with family and stuff. Thank you so much, Aditi. Last but not the least, Subo is here. He has an amazing background. Jim and I know him already. So we wanted to keep the something nice at the end. And Subo, over to you. There's not much I can say. It's all about you. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Vaishali. And thank you, Jim. Actually, it's a delight to be back. I think we met a few weeks ago and I shared a lot about what I do. But I like to keep the format that Jim used of give, get, and grow. And for me, and also connecting with the, one of the persons who just mentioned about trying to strike the balance between the, what he called the, uh, the used car salesman, or the car salesman, or the business folks, and then the technical folks. Uh, the reality is both are needed. Without the salesman, the technical people don't get whatever they get into the market. And without the revenue from the market, we don't have money to do the technical stuff. So it's a uh, question is how do you bring both of them together? And over the thing that Jim talks about a lot about P-shaped thinking or spreading the wing as required across disciplines is really that cross connecting between technical stuff and non-technical stuff. So I, from the part of my give is to talk more and more about that in a very structured way. And uh, I don't think Aditi needs to feel bad that she's a non-IBMer because I'm a non-computer guy. <laughs> so my hardcore engineering, manufacturing, innovation professional, obviously using computers and tools as much as I can, but I cannot write programs to do computer sing and dance like any, many of you can do. But nonetheless, I gave a talk recently to the uh, MIT Alumni Re Association of North Carolina, Northern California, I'll put the link on that in the chat box that talks about how you prepared for a post-AI world. Uh, there is a lot of misconception and fear. And as soon as I mentioned about this title, Jim sent me a talk by another professor, uh, Neckman, uh, who had spoken about it, and I used some of his information in my talk. So one of the things we get to do in this ICIP is to be able to bring things that we are familiar with, but not deep enough in a given area. But as soon as we put it out, there are people in the IC community who have so much depth in other areas who can chime in and help you out and bring you to a higher level of understanding of the subject matter. As far as the grow part of it is, what I would like to say is, 
truly what Jim said, that is I rather get part of it, which is the joy of seeing young people grow in their careers and get out of the apprehensions about life. Because anyone who comes to these meetings are probably at 90 percentile of most of the needs of the life have been met. When I say that, that doesn't mean there are not more to be gained in terms of wealth or career or job titles or things like that. But what is already there in the bag or already there in the glass is quite a bit. Very often we tend not to look at that and struggle more with the glass being half full, not being missed for the sake of looking at the glass that is half empty. So my work in the last several years has been to focus on how to encourage people to look at the half full part of the glass or the beauty of the rose without getting overwhelmed by the thorn which also comes with the rose or being able to do better with what we already have for the fruit we have on the hand rather than getting lost with worries or agonies of the fruit that we could have had. So that process of reshaping our thinking, psychologists and these days call it as cognitive behavior management. And cognitive behavior management is so powerful and so useful and so analytical. And I've been working on that as a, a core value for all of us as part of growing our own emotional intelligence and in writing and sharing about that. So the get part of the my journey has been to see young people who understand that and put it in their own life and that they come out of their little, uh, whatever you may call it, the rat hole or a pigeon hole or whatever you might call it, and blossoming it into a rather delightfully large open space available to all of us, which are being made even more larger for all these tools of AI and other things and so forth. And I think we are missing that propensity for joy in life by not looking at what is there and how to leverage it by being overwhelmed with the fear of what is not there and how to get at it. And I think I wish I had this kind of a open mind and a I don't want to call it wisdom, this kind of an outlook. 20 years ago, probably I would have been a far more joyful person, but certainly I'm a lot more joyful now than I, I would be otherwise. And then the group, get, go, uh, the group part of it is really going with the other folks in the community, professional and non-professional, so that there's a technical aspect of growth, which I'm contributing to through innovation programs, but also the non-technical, personal, human aspect of living and growing, to which I'm being able to share and grow myself along with others. Maybe I become a little bit philosophic and uh, morose. I don't mean to be that way, but you see my get grow, get give and grow kind of thing in my outlook. I right. get that. I've had a wonderful time chatting with um, Vaishali recently, and the gym has grown to be even more closer in the past few weeks than, I've, than we have been for the past few years. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thank you, Subu. And Subu, because he's based out here in Silicon Valley, where I am, I often take our ISIP students to the Computer History Museum. So uh, Deanna, uh, Miki, and... Uh, um, Aditi, if if any of the three of you are ever out here in Silicon Valley, just give me like a week's notice. And if you got two hours, we'll go to the Computer History Museum. I'll invite some of my old friends from Apple who built the original Macintosh. I'll invite, you know. Didn't I hear the Computer History Museum was having issues and shutting down recently? Uh, not the one out here. They're... Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Oh. I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but they're doing great out here. And um, yeah, I love to take uh, tours there. We just went with one where 
one of our board members, uh, Vanita Wells, she's at Meta. She joined us and she pointed out three or four startups to the students that she was part of. So if you're ever out here, please do that. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, Subu, you've got a lot of great books. I just want to shout out that, um, you know, as part of iZip, we do have a book process and there's several other things we have. And we have um, Michelle Carroll as our executive director. She couldn't join us on this call, but she recorded uh, a greeting for you all. And um, if it's if it's all right, I would like to play that because she wants to get introduced to you all as well. So what I'd like to do is I'm just gonna make sure I want to make sure you can hear it. So I'll start it. If you can't hear it, let me know. And um, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, let me see. OK, can you see my screen OK? OK, I see thumbs up. And I think I'll go into full screen mode. OK. And I think last time I played it at uh, 2x speed and she said, I sound like a chipmunk. So um, let me play it at, uh, I'll go with, uh, oops, I got windows in the way. Uh, I'm gonna go with 1.5, I hope that's okay. Uh, and just let me know if you can hear it. Uh, thumbs up if you can hear it. Um, Hello and welcome to ISIP, the International Society of Service Innovation Professionals. We welcome you as a new member. And I want to walk you through this Sorry, very it's presentation. A little fast on this on our website. It sounds too fast. Yes, I think one is fine. It's just eight minutes. It's not too long. So that's fine. Oh, okay. I'm going to go with normal speed. Here we you go. You want to make sure that she is heard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that seemed a little fast to me too. Got to work, um, which gives you a little walkthrough of who we are and the areas of focus and activity where we invite your- Can you hear it okay though? We are volunteer managed and run. So we really welcome your time and talent um, in areas we have sketched out or others you may have in mind. We are now up to a community of nearly 2000 um, people involved in all aspects of innovation, service innovation um, that is of benefit to people, to business, or the society. We have more than 600 institutions, uh, more than 200 educational institutions in 70 different countries among our members. And it really is about half and half US, outside the US, um, big European concentration and growing now in Asia and in the uh, Americas. You can meet our leaders on the leadership page of the website and you'll see companies and academic institutions, governments and NGOs represented in our leadership for a real diverse array from the very large to start. I'll just add a little bit of spice here and then start it again. Do you see Nicole Reinecke here? She's our ISIP vice president. She just posted on LinkedIn. She just got her 100th patent and she was so proud of that. So uh, Deb Stokes is our president. She's at Dell and she runs their external relations. But we're so proud of Nicole for getting her 100th patent that uh, I just had to stop and, and say that. Oh, this is Vanita Wells from Meta. She went to the Computer History Museum with us, but definitely good people to get to know all around. So back to Michelle. And the much smaller um, entities across all those types of entity, working on innovation in various ways. How do we advance innovation to benefit people, business and society? We do it through four basic buckets of activity. We host regular events for the exchange of ideas. This calendar on the events page of our website tells you which topics are up across month. There is something possible every week and um, month and quarterly, and we're doing series um, this year that are a little new and different. We regularly recognize excellence in service innovation. There is the big annual award um, announcement, which happens in the spring, 
Um, we call for nominations. So looking to how you can engage if you're involved in a cool service innovation project, nominate yourself. If you know of people working in these fields, please keep up these amazing entries. This year's um, submissions were so impressive and so diverse. Um, that's exactly what we want to see more and more of the kinds of service innovation afoot for excellence to be recognized. So um, there is awards participation. Um, if you're interested in publishing, Isaac manages a partnership with Business Experts Press. At no charge to you, you can write, contribute chapters, and um, Jim Spohr and Haluk Demerkian help um, research, write, and edit, and get you published in, in either of the two collections that Isaac manages. And we have our academic industry collaboration initiative really taking off. A lot of information about that on the website as well, AI Collab. Um, and there is serving as an ISAP ambassador. Um, in each of these areas, you'll see a section of the website. So on awards, look there and you can see the, all the award winners from last year and years prior, and the new ones about to come out for the nature of the work and specifics on the teams and people and institutions involved. There are five different kinds of events that ISAAP manages. The ambassador panels are where an ambassador, um, a liaise on behalf of ISAAP to another conference or institution that you might care about. Um, if you're interested in a topic, you can arrange the panels yourself. You identify a couple of speakers, a moderator. We are the platform where you host it and single hour long event, the ambassador series um, gets uploaded to our YouTube channel and that becomes an asset for the community. So that's one way. Um, all of those award winners are invited to share the nature of the work they've done that was recognized um, in a weekly speaker talk, a 30, 40 minute review of what the work was, who was involved, and how it makes a difference. Um, and people for all of these events can patch in live and interact or catch the recording later on our YouTube channel. The discovery summits are deeper dives into topics of importance. Uh, we're gonna have two discovery summit series this year. One in partnership with uh, Penn State University's School of Engineering an industry discovery series across different industries, exploring through lines um, of engineering excellence and, and innovation. The other is a discovery summit on the topic of democracy and the threats and opportunities of AI and social media to democracy. In this year, when more than half the world's population have elections, um, we do sponsor 10, about 10 conferences every year where ISAP leadership will be involved in planning or coordination of the event or speaking, keynoting, um, judging best papers. Um, there is always interest in serving on, uh, volunteers to serve on those committees for the 10 separate conference events and help with the white paper evaluations. And then in reach this year, in addition to those four outreach channels for idea exchange, we're launching a new quarterly in reach series of events where new members, and all members are welcome, but new members are invited to connect with each other, meet each other, and understand why you're here, what it is you want to give to get and to grow, how you want to grow with ISAP or help ISAP to grow. Again, drill down in each of these areas on the website there's an active call for authors for the business expert press partnership on the website now there's a call for ambassadors always we have more than 90 active ambassadors liaising with other organizations and institutions conferences um, and there's the ai collab where we have uh, i believe five now active universities working on the topics now are digital twins um, development and generative AI. Um, they've developed some fascinating playbooks for ISAP 
and are working on projects for our institutional members or can. Um, you can get specific examples there on the website, AI Collab section. Uh, indiv um, individuals, people such as yourself are free for membership in ISA, um, and it is, and we are funded by our institutional members. There's a tiered investment and engagement uh, system, which is shown here. And if you are interested in institutional membership or know someone who might be, I would be the one to contact. And again, I'm Michelle, Executive Director of ISIP, and my email is right there. Again, welcome. It's good to have you in the community. Very good. Um, and I think we have just a couple slides from uh, Michelle to share, and then we'll just go around that we can end or, or go around if people have other comments. So, Michelle, do you want to share the couple slides there that Michelle uh, sure. yes. had for us? And uh, okay. So, um, yeah, I think. Sorry, can you see my slide, Jim? Do you want to go ahead with this other ways to engage? Yeah, and I was just going to maybe copy and paste it into the um, chat because I think it's a little bit easier uh, in there. So let me go ahead and send it, make sure I send it to everyone. Okay, good. I put those in there. And now just uh, just to summarize, um, we're actually redoing the registration, but this is our registration link, uh, izip.org slash register. And um, again, we're up to almost 2000 members. We do have a LinkedIn company page where um, there's a lot of announcements and we have a LinkedIn um, discussion group that uh, is also uh, on LinkedIn. Um, and you can view all the past IB events, uh, IZIP, sorry, <laughs> IZIP events and presentations on the YouTube channel and SlideShare. Um, and um, we do have this upcoming events part. We're actually redoing the whole website right now. Michelle is redoing that. And there are a lot of volunteer opportunities. And um, just to end, I'll just say I've never been more excited about iZip, and I think it's partly because we're entering the AI era. Um, because in the past, I, I'd say even today, the hardest thing is onboarding new uh, helpers because it's it's so hard to onboard. People want to help, but you know, how do they get up the learning curve? And I think as we embrace uh, AI assistants to help actually do the stuff and onboard people. I think it's going to be, you know, the potential for thousand X speed ups <laughs> of onboarding and, you know, literally onboarding some people takes months and months and months. And I think we're going to be able to do it in a much shorter period of time. And People love to connect with real people. So even in this AI era, the benefit is knowing I'm talking to a real person too, who really knows me and we're collaborating together. So I think this is a very exciting time for iZip and I'm so happy to uh, you know, host this meeting with Vashali, uh, who's our leader on the quarterly welcome call. So back to you, Vishali. Uh, thank you so much, Jim. Does anyone have any questions or you know, suggestions or comments here before we wrap up the meeting? Really, except for one small thing that is, as I mentioned about uh, this aspect of uh, emotional intelligence, cognitive behavior, and the connection to professional life. If anyone has any interest to engage in any kind of a in-depth study or even a case studies or anything like that, I'd be delighted to hear from them. Also, my website. I'm game. So that's that was, primarily my point that I don't want to share it. Yeah, yes. very good. Very good. And Mackey, you're on iZip Slack. I don't know. Subu, are you on iZip Slack? Do you use our iZip Slack? You know? I don't know what that means. Oh, okay. I told you I'm 
Cool. Yeah, and I'll, send you, I'll send you an email explaining that because I know Mechie's on there and you two can collaborate. That's the other thing is we have a Slack channel. And okay. today okay. I got a note from our business expert press. He sent me a book proposal from an amazingly brilliant entrepreneur in the Czech Republic, where I just was to meet with the Kindrel folks. Um, and it's called No Work, and it's the future with AI. And it looks like an amazing book. So that's going to be coming out. And Subu, I think you're going to be interested in that. I think you'll all be interested in that. The other thing that happened today that's just kind of in the news is um, one of our board members, Annie Hardy from Cisco, she's planning a new project on the future of work called Wisdom Work. Wisdom Work. And it looks at the data, information, knowledge hierarchy, and how people can move to wisdom work. And that sounds yeah. super exciting as well. So I would just say, you know, you're in a good group here of people who like to innovate and who believe in service, giving and getting and growing with our service interactions. So uh, it's what we make of it when we interact with others. And, and personally, I find the one-on-one -on -one interactions sometimes, you know, it's nice to be in the big group sometimes and or a small group like this. But as you meet eyes of people, you'll find they're open to dialogue. And I really encourage everyone to uh, just start building their network. It's it's uh, it's a really good group. And thank you so much for being part of it. I can't thank you enough, really. I just can't thank you enough. So thank you. Thank you for building this, Jim. It's a rare gem. You've done a great job. Thank you, Mickey. It's We do it together. So it's uh, it's fun. All right. Um, with that, anybody else got any thoughts going through their mind? Thank you, Subu, for that thought about emotional intelligence, which is so important. We got to get that taught in the schools at like, third, you know, the age of your grandson. He looked pretty young. That's the age where, you know, you get the emotional intelligence working and and things are a lot better. Yes, uh, that's an area I'm you. passionate about as well, Subu. So yeah, I'd, I'd love to connect and share more about that too. Yeah. And I definitely want to talk more to Becky as well. <laughs> I guess Yay, the, you have three people already, Subu. Great job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think people who haven't dropped their LinkedIn, Subu, you can do that so that others could connect in the room. If you can drop okay. your LinkedIn on the chat. So because sometimes it may be a little hard to know their names or type in. Uh, yeah. So for the very first thanks to all of you for coming here. But before that, we all thank Jim for the very thought of you know forming ISIP and giving all of us an opportunity to no great ISIP members and other stuff. Feel free to reach out, feel free to connect and there's more to come. Thanks everyone. Have a nice evening. Bye -bye. Thank you all. Bye now. Cheers new friends. Can, See ya. Thank you. Can I get the thank link you. to the Slack oh. channel? What? Go ahead, Aditya. What? So, can I get a link to the Slack channel? Oh, yes, yes. I will send, uh, uh, Subu doesn't know what it is yet, so he'll just get something and have to figure it out. But you know, Aditi, what it is, and Diana knows what it is. So, uh, so I'll send you all uh, a Slack link in the next five minutes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.